welcome to the stage, Bailey Ashley.
go to the steps. Go to the steps. Now, think. Is there anything that you can think of that is worse than whoopings? Anything? Disappointment. That is true. That is true. But no, no. No? <laughs> the one thing that's worse than whoopings is exercising. Oh! <laughs> yeah. My mom would make me go to the steps, and I was sitting there. She said, do calf raises all the way up the steps. I said, calf raises? I said, okay, so I'm just sitting here, just going up the steps. I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad. Calf raises, just walking. I got about to the 10th step, and I was crying, I was shaking. I said, mama, am I almost done, mama? She said, she said, if you do the last one good, then you can be done. I said, all right, all right. That was the, I tried to make it my best. I was up there raising up. I was like, making sure she was looking at me, looking down the stairs. I was like, do you see me? My legs are shaking. I'm working hard, mama. And I looked at her, and she just gave me that look. I was like, okay, I won't look at you, mama. So I just did the next one. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be done whenever I'm done. And I was like, it's five minutes later. I was like, mom, the last step was 10 steps ago. Like, am I not done yet? And I, my sister I also got in trouble. She's sitting over here doing a wall sit. And her legs are shaking. And I was just like, man, at least I'm lucky enough to be doing these steps. I started cheating them. I was just like, going up the steps as fast as I can. Got to the point where she started making dinner and she just forgot about us. So if you see these calf muscles, thank you. <laughs> um, my mom used to lie to me a lot. Or I guess all of my siblings. Um, what's your name? Vinny. Vinny. Did you imagine having 10 siblings? At eight? I'm 16. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there's 16 of us, and the 16 of us have J names except for the one, and he's the 17th. Um, his name is Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Jasmine, Janae, Jalen, Jaden, Trevor, and then the list continues with J's. My mom thought that that was creative. Um, every time we would get in trouble, my mom would storm off and say, I'm done having kids. We knew it was a lie because there was eight more after me. <laughs> um, she would tell us that she's having another kid, usually on Christmas. Um, it'd be the big surprise and she'd say, we're expecting. And I'd say, I don't know what you're expecting besides the money issues and more headaches, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the more <laughs> is, I am reliving 19 kids in county but we don't have the legal issues. <laughs> All right. Help me welcome to the stage, Shelby Tay. to agree with the last people that came up. It wasn't my first choice to be here, but uh, here we are. So if I could have some pity laughs every once in a while, that might help the grade I'm going to get a little bit more. So that would be nice. Um, I'm going to talk about having siblings too. Um, I grew up with an older brother, so it was a little crazy um, every once in a while. Uh, he's one of the smartest people I know, and he's pretty clever, but he lacks common sense. And the one thing we always give him crap for the most is that when he was younger, uh, he looked at my dad and asked him what an ice maker makes. <laughs> um, but he is, like I said, he's very, very clever, because one time we were going to the post office when we were little. I was about eight, he's about 11, and on the, on the door there was a sign that said, uh, no dogs allowed except seeing eye dogs. And he asked my dad what a seeing eye dog was. And my dad said that they were dogs that helped blind people see. And my brother replied quickly with, then who's the sign for? <laughs> um, so I also have two younger sisters, and having two younger sisters is very entertaining. Um, 
For example, I was driving my sister to my dad's house one time, and my dad lives on Aspen Lane. And I said, ha, 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 dad lives on Aspen Lane. And she looks at me, and she said, ha, 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 you said pin. <laughs> um, uh, and then I was babysitting her one time and uh, she came up to me and she had a dead fly in her hand and she had a pickle in the other hand and uh, she said, look, I just killed this fly. And I said, oh, okay, well let's go wash your hands and maybe throw the pickle away since you have fly guts in your hand. And she looked at me while taking a bite and said, why is that a problem? I killed the fly with this pickle. Oh. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I have time for tonight. <laughs>
I'm not gonna tell you which one though. I, um, <laughs> I have three siblings, Austin, Luke, and then there's a girl after that. I don't really know her name. <laughs> I also have a father, he's here tonight. What up, Pops? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years, it's okay. <laughs> I was getting the milk about 19 years ago. <laughs> I don't have any material. Just gonna unfold it. Theories! Timmy Turner, you get an F! I know the real term. <laughs> Don't get the taco from Burger King. <laughs> I seriously have that on here. <laughs> Should we get one? I was also going to do a little bit of singing as well. I don't really know what to sing though, so if anyone has any requests, I'll take them. No air. Tell me how you can do it. What? I'm just Next. I'm just saying. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> what? I'm a little teapot. Isn't that like a commercial? <laughs> like, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know that one. Next. Anyone? Sorry, I need help. I don't have material. <laughs> it's, it's not a joke. Ozzy Osbourne. Huh? Ozzy Osbourne. I can put it on a guitar, actually. It goes like this. <laughs> Oh, wait! You can use my guitar. <laughs> I don't know what to do with anything else. Welcome to the stage, Brogan Sanders. I think of it as women, temperamental and mood swings. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's also hard to tell like what, what occurs next. I mean, speaking of women, I want to talk about my mom. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. Uh, moms, they'll do anything for you, except my mom. I haven't seen her in the past 20 years. The only time I see her is when I walk, go into my grandma's house and there's a picture of her as a child hanging on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My mom's great, great. She left. She left because uh, she didn't want anything to do with me. But it's weird because she still sends me checks once a month. I don't, I don't know what those are for. But I'll take the money when I can get it. I mean, heck. Now, my dad, my dad on the other hand, he's just a creature. I don't even know. He, uh, he does care about me, though. He always tells me, like, I'm going to end up like my mom. But I don't want to live in Kentucky and be a, a professional dancer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, bad, bad deal. 
Yeah. I always try and write my mom, but she never writes back. I always get a return address that says Indiana Woman's Penitentiary. <laughs> so I don't know if that's like the housing she lives in, the housing complex or what, but she don't ever write me back. But no, no, my mom, is, she's really a great person. As long as I keep getting the checks, then I don't really have anything to worry about because I'm still getting money from her. <laughs> that's my time, folks. Thanks. <laughs> Let's keep things rolling and let's get to the stage. Nick Windner! somebody comes up to me and like they have beef with me like I say like the most random stuff because I'm so nervous like I am right now but like they start coming up to me and like talking crap and everything I'm like man I would fight you right now but I know the grass ain't cut and my cousin's coming over for dinner later I got church or something <laughs> um, I'm gonna talk about my mom now <laughs> So my mom is not funny, like, at all. At, that's where I get it from. <laughs> uh, any of you guys' moms, let's see, maybe. Uh, any of you guys' moms think they're, like, just so funny and just try to make, like, little jokes? I'm mostly, like, talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my mom comes up to me all the time and tries to make, like, little jokes and everything. And she tries to be funny and everything. She comes up to me trying to make me laugh. Honestly, just makes me more mad. She's like, "Hey, you're adopted." And <laughs> I wish my best friend was a clothes hanger. I don't know. It was stuff like that. Um, oh. <laughs> I've been working on that one for like five hours. Okay. Um, so like, I try to come back at her. Um, so I try to come back at her. One of my own jokes. Like, hey, mom. Why don't moms wear watches? Why, Nick? Um, because there's a clock on the stove. Oh! <laughs> Show her. All right, that's my thing. <laughs> <answer. laughs> All right. Let's get to the stage next. Carter.
Alright, what's up guys? Um, my name is Carter Giggy. Uh, not to be confused with Gibby. Um, I get that a lot. It's Dr. Mike Carly. So I saw there was a Dollar General um, next door when I pulled in and um, I was actually really surprised because I'm like from out in the middle of nowhere. So like I was really surprised they had one of these where they're actually people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure when Dollar General like is trying to figure out where to put a new like franchise, they get like an employee at corporate, like get a map of Johnson County, just get a dart. Figure out <laughs> throw it out the dartboard. Yeah, right there, right off of 300 East. That's where we're putting our Dollar General. <laughs> yeah, 100 yards off the road in a cornfield. Um, it's football season. Um, yeah, national championships tomorrow night. Um, I got money on the Tigers, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. So, um, Tom Brady, uh, first time in like 10 years or so. He didn't make it past the first round of the playoffs. Um, it, is, it is good to see, though, that he'll get to spend some time at home uh, with his mom or his wife, <laughs> <laughs> his kids, um, and uh, he'll even get to see his uh, daddy, Ryan Tannehill, play in the AFC Championship team. Uh, that's all the time I got. Thank you, guys. Give it up once again for Nick Winers. All right, we go to the stage. Cameron. I can't read these names. Uh, Shannon O'Sullivan and the people are with these people. Stellar introduction, all right? Hey, I'm Shane. I'm Cam. And I'm lonely. <laughs> uh, does anyone here have an overbearing relative? By any chance? Anyone? Uh, raise your hands. Anybody? What's uh? What's your relative's name? <laughs> My mom. Yeah. D. D. All right, that's a good name. You, big burly man in the back. What's your? Uh, Aunt Karen, that's perfect. We're going to use that as the uh, overbearing relative in this skit because I care about my relative too much to say her name at a comedy club. <laughs> oh. Good one. Thank you. <laughs> my Aunt Karen's actually right here, and she's actually sporting the exact same hairstyle that she had back in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So um, every Karen loves to be a backseat driver. They love to have control where they shouldn't have any. And uh, it's actually become a staple of Karen culture. And this first set of skits that we've designed is to give you the tools necessary in order to counter this backseat driver known as Karen. Man, I feel like you've been driving forever. Would you stop complaining? Nothing's more annoying than when you keep whining about driving. Yeah, well, nothing's more annoying than when you keep complaining about your kids, but you keep having more, Aunt Karen. <laughs> Another one could look like. Uh, I'm going to turn around at this next stoplight. What? Why would you do that? That's just going to take more time. Well, maybe you use that time to reconnect with your five kids. <laughs> In the great words of uh, DJ Khaled, another one. Why are you driving so fast? I need to speed up. I need to pass this guy. Well, if you don't slow down, you're going to get into your third wreck. Well, if you don't slow down, you're going to get into your third marriage. <laughs> now, now, Karen's love making scenes at grocery stores, department stores, Sunglass Hut. It could be any store, really. Um, but they do this because it it helps distract them from their past failed marriages. Uh, I need to speak to your manager. I am the manager. What seems to be a problem, ma'am? 
So uh, I was looking around this Burlington Coat Factory, and I was wondering if you guys had any real fur coats. Well, I was looking at you, and I was wondering, do you have any real hair, or is it just all wig? If you thought that was scary, wait until you get to the checkout line to see Karen's final form. Okay, will that be all for you, ma'am? Uh, actually, I was looking at you, and I was wondering, why does your tattoo have five different colors, or were you just not thinking? Well, I was looking at your kids, and I was wondering, is there a reason they're five different colors, or were you just not thinking? Oh! <laughs> Yikes. So, <laughs> dinners can get pretty weird with Karen's, dinners and holidays. Um, they always love to know every little bit about you, um, so they try to dig and dig and dig so they can fill the void in their hearts um, because they're not on speaking terms with their kids. So yeah, here's, here's uh, more of these. I saw you sneak away with another plate there, Shane. I saw the repo man sneak away with your car there, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Karen loves to make her conversations private where your conversations are public for everyone to hear, apparently. Hey, uh, what are you guys talking about over there? Uh, why don't you stay out of grown folks' talk? Uh, why don't you stay at married men's houses? <laughs> so everybody needs breaks from Karen, so you subconsciously look down at your phone um, during dinner, and uh, this is not recommended um, because a phone out at the dinner table is actually like chum in the water to sharks. And uh, this shark's name is actually Karen, so. Shane, will you please get off your phone? Karen, will you please stop heating your house with your oven? <laughs> <laughs> Karen's love to think they're the uh, reincarnation of the second coming. Um, so they love to point out every little wrong thing that you've done in your life. Um, it can get pretty taxing, so here's what this would look like. Hey Shane, I saw you got a drinking ticket last weekend. Well, I wasn't drinking at 17, that's for sure. Well, you can't drink when you're pregnant, Karen, that's for sure. <laughs> now every Karen will pop that one question every Thanksgiving dinner about that special someone. Hey Shane, are you uh, still living that single life? Well, I don't know, Karen. Is your husband still on that business trip from two years ago? <laughs> All right, so here we gave you a couple of different options to deal with this apex predator. Uh, we hope these tricks help you when you, uh, when you uh, encounter Karen. And uh, we didn't really talk about this, but if any of these fail, uh, your best bet is probably just to go limp, uh, play dead, <laughs> and uh, pray she moves on to your third cousin down the table. Uh, thank you, that's our time. I'm Cameron Beanoggle. I'm Shane O'Sullivan, and I'm Gage Creech. All right, let's keep things rolling. Welcome to the stage, Adam Wright. Is this not the modeling trends? <laughs> I was told I'm not very funny, but I have a funny body, so that's what I was going for. <laughs> Apparently, all these com comedians, God, I can't talk, are switching out like Karen's husbands, I guess. It's called a callback. Um, so yeah, he said, my name is Adam Fry. He actually pronounced it right, but it's spelled F-R-E-Y, and everyone says Frey, and you know, I tell them, like, no, it's Fry. And then they all want to be comedians, like, oh, like French fries, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My mom told me that joke was funny, so. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, you know, so I'm like, you know, it's Fry, it's just spelled F-R-E-Y. They're like, oh, like Frey, like the band, you know, have you ever heard that song? How to save a life. I can't sing either, sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm like, no, it's just, I told you, it's fried, just listen.
But then, like after that problem, you know, they get to know me a little better for some reason. I don't know. And they learn, they're like, oh, Adam, what's your middle name? I'm like, Adam. And they're like, Man, your name is Adam, Adam? Like, yeah, my dad has a really bad stutter. Oh. <laughs> no, my name is, Adam is my middle name. And my first name is actually Joseph. But I was thinking of switching my first name to Captain, and just to spite my parents go by that. They're like, oh yeah, let's go by your middle name until I have to, you know, get a credit card. And I spend like way more time at the bank than I ever should have. <laughs> that was not a good punchline. So. <laughs> well, so when I was thinking about my name, you know, what I was going to talk about, Sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, let's come up with a stage name and just not have to, you know, worry about this. So I was like, oh, I should call myself Dr. Laughs. But, like, I don't want to go to school any longer than I have to. <laughs> okay, so no one laughed and now the name doesn't work for two reasons. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's my time. All right, help me and welcome to the stage, Levi Burns. Um, he actually pronounced it right. Um, all the middle school people thought that my last name was Brian. It's spelled B-Y-R-N-E. And they would just call me by my last name. So I went all of middle school being called Brian. Didn't correct anybody. <laughs> thank you. I know it wasn't funny, but thank you. Um, so um, I got a bad joke for everybody. Um... So why why is the bear why do bears not like fast food? Why? 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 Because why? they can't catch it. Oh. Oh. That wasn't good. Uh, just bear with me. <laughs> so um, I can't think now. Um, give me a second. Time's up. Um, so I love my mom. <laughs> she um, she cares about me a lot, and whenever I'm sick, she does anything she can to like help me feel better. And so I'm I'm in college now, and if I tell her that I'm sick, or if she finds out somehow, then. Um, then she'll just get there as soon as she can, and she always brings like the most random things. Um, she'll bring medicine, which is good, I'll need that. But she'll bring me just like random stuff, like she'll bring movies um, that I don't want to watch, and then she'll bring me like White Castle. Like I don't know why I'd want that. I don't even like White Castle if I'm feeling good. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if she's trying to make me feel be better or just like kill me. <laughs> Not really sure. Um, so this next joke, it was already like used today, which kind of sucks, but I'm still gonna say it because I have more time. Um, so anyone notice that like, that like uh, Google is like talking to women? Anyone else notice that? Because like you're just typing into Google and then different stuff starts popping up, and none of it is what you're wanting to type in. And so I'll just be talking, and then I just can't even finish my sentence. They just start correcting me or uh, suggesting other things. Um, so that's pretty much all I got. So thank you.
You can go anywhere, really. You know, you can go in your mom's basement, park, but most of the time people go to gyms and such. And according to a um, statement that is totally not from Wikipedia, it says that there's about an 18% increase in memberships for gyms. Now, that sounds pretty good, right? But in reality, in about a week or so, those people are probably going to go back home to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> along with, like, you know, a container of ice cream. I'm kind of afraid to eat some cream. Um, now, as exercise, like, when I was a little kid, I thought of exercising as more of a punishment than an other. But, hey. <laughs> but as a young adult, that works out regularly, if you count, like once a month. <laughs> I try to like work out to where, you know, my heart is like at the max, right? Just boom, 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 boom. I need to get that checked out. <laughs> but I've always thought there was like certain things that are kind of whack with, you know, more of gyms, really. You know, you got the, like the gym bros or meatheads. You know, they always got to flex in front of the mirror, you know, take a snap, uh, and then they got snap girls. Hashtag, bro. <laughs> they usually use lines that are like, just got in some nice parts today. I'm looking at you, Shane, buddy. That's all I got. <laughs> Because, you know, just feel like it. Because 
I don't know how to spell. Um, <laughs> I found they used a scenario me using uh, my dad's name and my name. My name's Jason. I'm the second. So I felt like he was just using his name rather than my name. All right. Um, for instance, my dad likes to be loud. He's always in my ear yelling. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, but if you see him at an athletic event, you will hear him regardless of where you're at. I'm at home and I can still hear, hear him at the Warren game. And you know what? I just, I really don't like that, you know? But he uses a horn instead. And he uses that horn more at home than at a game, you know? <laughs> and as I said with annoying their kids, yeah, I'm one of those kids. So, you know what he's doing? He's putting the horn to my ear. And I don't know if I can hear you guys laughing or not. Uh, but I'm a little deaf. I'm a little deaf. I'll just say that. Um, with, with the horn and with him being loud, he's not sneaky. And you know, I'm sitting in my room. This happens a lot. And he'll just come around the corner. I hear it. You know, I'm expecting it. I still get scared. I will still end up peeing my pants. Sorry I said that. Um, no one was supposed to know that. Um, now, another thing he loves doing was, um, well, this is when I was young, thank God he stopped doing it, was when I was young, he used to lay on me. He, he was about 280 pounds, I don't want to call him fat, but he was just a, a little bit on the chubby side, a little bit on the chubby side. Um, yeah. I call that a hard push-up, but in my head, I'm thinking, uh, this is what I used to call it, uh, stay on the ground, you know you can't get up, all right? Um, he would usually say this, and it would irritate me, because he knows, he knows I'm on the ground, and he's in the air, because this is what he say. He would say, I am Superman, and you know, I'd be super flat. He'd be in the air, I'd be on the pavement. Alrighty, that'll be all my time. Thank you guys. All right, help me welcome to the stage, Jake Hendrick. Three days of classes. I feel like I'm kind of in a Gordon Ranger's kitchen right now, telling me to cook a uh, filet mignon. All I know to cook is a uh, scrambled egg, so that's about the best I can do. <laughs> so, um, my family got divorced when I was 16, and uh, 16 year old self, um, I was happy, I was hoping to get a, uh, a hot stepmom. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> my dad got a girlfriend. Like, yes, do it, yeah. Hot stepmom, let's get it. And we're going to Applebee's, and we walk in, I'm like, oh, best 6 out of 10, at the best. It's like, oh, maybe I can get a hot stepsister, hopefully. And <laughs> we move in together, and all I got was a 16-year-old cat with cancer. So that was the best I got out of that. And uh, speaking of family, um, this, this year, I think, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, it was all good. Some get uh, some mimosas, some Thanksgiving, uh, you know, classic dinners, creamy casserole, turkey. It was going all well until my grandpa had a heart attack, and um, ambulance came, and you know the special stuff. He said, and, "Well, it was cardiac arrest." Kind of mentioned that, and my little cousin, he's like six or seven. He said, "Who's uh, who's cardiac? Why is he getting arrested?" <laughs> we, all, we didn't really know how to explain it to him, so we kind of just ignored it. But, yeah. Uh, girls are weird. Um, <laughs> a lot of the girls have, uh, are relying on zodiac signs to date now. I don't really get that. Um, this past week, um, I got denied from a girl because we were compatible. I don't know what that means. I'm an Aquarius. She said she was a Taurus. So, I don't know. She was going while four. We were out to get dinner, and she's like, wait, what's your, uh, what's your zodiac sign? 
like uh, Aquarius. Oh, sorry, I had to call the dinner off. Why? I looked at my horoscope today, we're just not compatible. Alright. And, um... <coughs> So uh, last month I was driving around and I got pulled over, and um, I was getting so nervous getting, getting pulled over. I don't know why, um, but I got pulled over and the cop gets out and he looks at me. He's like, "I'm guessing you're not Shelly." Like, no. So like, okay, have a good night. That's my mom. He's like, "Oh well, her license is suspended." I was like, "It's kind of weird because I could have been anyone just stealing a car." <laughs> and I could have said like, "Yeah, I'm not the person." I'm like, okay, cool. So you be. Yeah. So, um, I got a little one-liner for you guys to end it. It's pretty bad. Uh, did you guys hear about the new restaurant on the moon? It's all great and everything, but there's no atmosphere. Oh. That's all I got. Thank you. All right. Let's keep things rolling. Welcome to the stage, Jack Hawkins! Good evening, good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Um, you know, growing up, I, uh, when I was younger, I always go, um, me and my family and like a bunch of other friends, I always go to a, a friend's house for a New Year's party. And um, I'm sure a lot of the uh, people out there, you know, I have uh, this one uh, crazy uncle, and uh, Uncle Joey. And Uncle Joey, he really never made it to the ball drop. You know, he was <laughs> on the couch, passed out, you know. But there was one time I was about 11 years old, 11, 12 years old. <laughs> And um, it's about 11.55, we're all gathered in one room together. And I was looking around, and I was like, where is Uncle Joey? So then um, I went to go upstairs, and I was like, I gotta find him, I gotta see what's up, you know, make sure he's okay. So then uh, I kind of peeked through the door, and all of a sudden, <laughs> I see this uh, goldfish tank, and it's spread out everywhere. It's, um, he knocked it over, and the glass was shattered everywhere. And, um, no, not the glass, the, uh, the fish were like bouncing everywhere on the ground. And, <laughs> And I was like, hey, Uncle Joey, I heard you want to fill it up with pee and see if you can save the fish. <laughs> and then um, after I said that, I saw my mom was behind me. And yeah, she ended up whooping my butt. I got 57 spankings when I went back home. Got grounded for a whole month and it was bad. <laughs> but then, um, I never really understand. Well, I wasn't uh, a big fan of the first date. You know, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on the guys on the first date. You know, they have to... Be the one to pick up the girl and um, clean the car and make sure you know everything's just right for them, you know, because girls, you know, they're high maintenance. <laughs> so, um, I was on this date one time, this first date one time, and um, I thought it was going well and everything. And then, you know, I took it out to a nicer restaurant. And, um, but I never understood it is, um, we were looking at the menu and she was like, well, I don't know what to get. And I was like, you know, um, it's whatever. And then she ended up ordering, you know, this $60 lobster. And I was like, you know, this, this shit better be worth it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and then, um, at the end of the dinner, she ended up being a weirdo and everything. And I just want to know, what do we, as guys, what do we say to girls when we don't want to ever see them again, you know? What am I supposed to say? You know, hey, you know, well, goodbye. Hope you never see you again. Thanks for that freaking lobster you were waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. That's my favorite. All right, we're on that downhill run, and I want to thank you all for staying with us. Welcome to the stage, Egan Keeper Hill. And I was like, this crowd can't be worse than the last one I was in front of. It was a jury. Oh. <laughs> uh, with that being said, having the hearing that the time is going to be strengthened from five to three, that was like the second best news I could have heard all week. 
First one was, you're not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but going off of crazy family stories, I got an uncle. He's a redneck, and he's rich. Not a good combo. So him, him and my dad went fishing. <clears throat> they spent like $15,000 on all this new gear just to catch a couple of fish. And they were in Minnesota for like four days. <clears throat> they caught one fish the whole time. One fish in four days. And they were driving back, and my dad was all, he was pretty depressed. He was like, Tony, you realize we only caught one fish and spent $15,000 on that one fish, basically. And he goes, you know what? I'm glad we didn't catch any more. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to explain that, but was, thank you, we got it, got laughs. But, um, <clears throat> no, but my uncle, him and my dad are like best friends, and they're brothers, and they were talking one time, and my uncle was talking to my dad, he goes, hey, I'm thinking about divorcing my wife, and my dad goes, why? He goes, well, yeah, we haven't talked in like two months. And my dad spits out his beer, and he goes, what are you talking about? I think I consider that one over. Those are the best women to find. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, more on the crazy uncle side. My uncle and my aunt, they ended up not getting a divorce. Uh, but they still, they still have this weird chemistry. They're in, they got the bathroom. Everyone shares the bathroom. and Everyone's arguing about what's what, who's who, and how much you can get. So they have a little comp compromise. <clears throat> my uncle has five things. My aunt, like 400. A little compromise though, but um, I was really hoping I would take longer than that to get all those to no red light, nothing yet. Um, well, uh, let's go more on the crazy uncle part. There we go. Uh, my uncle was telling me this story one time, and he was like, one time there was this guy he was breaking into the house. <coughs> Sorry. And he hears this noise, he goes, uh, Jesus is watching you, Jesus is watching you. And he stops, looks around, doesn't see anything, keeps on going. Minutes later, he goes, Jesus is watching you, he hears it again. He looks in the back, and he sees a little parrot in the cage. And he goes, is that you saying that? And the parrot's like, yes. And he's like, what's your name, parrot? He's like, Robert. He's like, who names a parrot Robert? And he goes, the same idiot that named the Rottweiler Jesus. Oh! But thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right, well, a big round of applause for all the comics that have been here already. And now we're bringing the comic to the stage that you all are going to really enjoy because you can heckle the daylights out of this guy. Welcome to the stage, the doctor, the professor. Jason Jamerson! Well, that's right. I'm a professor, and I'm the guy you can blame for a lot of these folks. So, yeah. It's kind of interesting. I, you know, I, I told my grandma, I said, yeah, grandma, I graduated. I'm a professor. I got a job. I'm going to be an assistant professor. She said, what well, are you going to profess? I'm like, oh, grandma, sociology. So analyze me. Well, I only do group, so unless you're schizophrenic, I can't help you. <laughs> so, so man, I, I said, I'm going to be an assistant professor. Who are you going to assist? I'm like, Grandma, that means I'm at the first level. Oh, okay, so, you know, I got tenure, which means they can't fire me unless I do something stupid, like put my hands on the students. That's why I never touch you. <laughs> and uh, so I told my Grandma, Grandma, I'm an associate professor. She's like, who you associate with? <laughs> no, Grandma, it just means I made it to the second level. So, you know, I'm trying real hard to make it to the third level, become a full professor. I don't think I'm going to tell my grandma because I want to ask me what I'm full of. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's fun being a professor. You know, I get to do things like this, torture students in public. You know? um, I, I was talking to a football coach one time. You know, in 48, this is true, 48 of the 50 states, the highest paid public official is a basketball or football coach. They make more than the governor. This is, you can Google it. Don't you love saying that? Google I it. Just Google it. You don't believe me? Google it. What happened to <laughs> the good old days? You know, people would argue for like hours in the bar, right? The guy, the bar guy would have like an encyclopedia in the back and say <laughs> that. Now people just get their phone out. I'm so smart, I Googled it. But, but anyway, um, I was talking to a football coach and I was like, why do you get paid so much more than us? He said, well, make your students take exams in public and you'll get paid more too. 
So I'm expecting a raise. Um, but you know, anyway, it, it, it's kind of interesting just to see. I love teaching. Because students say the funniest things, you know? Like, you know, give out the exam and they'll be like, the spelling town? No, just make up words. I use my universal translator. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Or, or, will this be on a curve? Why, do you plan on failing better than everyone else? <laughs> you know, just, as students say once, you know, with that to a colleague of mine, you're kind of pretty for a teacher. <laughs> it's like, you're not so smart for a student. What does that mean? You know? Um, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. So when I do a little politics, I was thinking people are like, why did Donald Trump win? I know why Donald Trump win. One, because white people like big egos. <laughs> really, think about it. Think about some of the favorite movies and books, right? So did, think of Tarzan. How many black babies do you think got lost in the jungles of Africa? But then you lose a white baby and becomes king of the jungle. Right, right? Or, or, I don't know if there's Tom Cruise fans out there, but white guy goes to Japan, he's the last samurai. Right? White guy gets left in the middle of nowhere, North Dakota. Right? He becomes the best Native American. He dances with wolves. Okay? I mean, whites have such big egos, it's really kind of interesting. They decided to make a movie about Gandhi. Guess who they got to play it? A white guy. Not only that, but he's a British white guy. Do you all know what Gandhi's famous for? Being poor. <laughs> over, over, no, not being poor. <laughs> Gandhi is f famous for overthrowing British oppression. All right, so, but they're going to have a British guy play Gandhi. All right, now, you may say, they say that if you think one race is better than the other race, you're racist. I hate to tell you this, I may be a racist because I think the Indianapolis 500 is the greatest race of all! <laughs> <laughs>